Welcome to Garage Talk. As always, I'm Conrad. Let's go. I'm Ted. It's time to rock and roll. Hey, Teddy, today in the garage we have with us Big John Morgan. <laughs> wow. Wow. Welcome, John. Well, thank you very much for having me. I- How are you doing? And this episode and season are brought to you by Nicholson Realty 2.0. Do you prefer Mr. Big John? Big you John? Big John, John. Big- <laughs> I get called a lot of things. Oh, yeah. <laughs> John, how did you get your start in, in radio? But before you delve into that, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, well, um, originally uh, from Blackford County, uh, born and raised there. Mm-hmm. Um, and then uh, after I got married, kind of moved around, lived in uh, Converse. I lived uh, in Jonesboro for a little while, and then... When my wife got pregnant and knew we were having kids, uh, we wanted to send them to school where I went to school. And uh, so I've uh, been in Montpelier now for about 15 years. Okay. Um, uh, two hey. kids, 15 and 12. And uh, yeah, do the, do the radio thing. You asked how I got into it. Yeah. Um, it was, it was, it's funny. It's always kind of been a lifelong dream. I, I mean, you and I are the same age, you said. Yeah. And uh, I remember listening to the radio. Uh, recording songs when you wanted to hear them you know it was back before on-demand music and 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 everything else so i do that and i uh, had a had a boom box that had you know the dual cassettes one you could play off of and one you could record on and the little condenser mic in it and i'd i'd pretend i was a dj back i was jamming john on wjon i still i still have a, a cassette tape of when i was probably 11 or 12 years old and uh, that was always kind of a, a dream when i was a little kid but then um, when I got into high school, I didn't know if it was a, a feasible occupation, things like that. Mm-hmm. I uh, kind of had dreams to be a math teacher. And uh, that was kind of like all through high school, I was planning on being a math teacher until my senior year, and uh, I failed calculus. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That'll do it. That'll do it. And, uh, That'll do it. Uh, it was the end of the first semester. I remember vividly. It was the end of the first semester. And uh, I knew I was going to fail the whole first semester. And he gave out the final exam. I wrote my name at the top and just walked it back up to his desk, like didn't even do a single problem on it. And I go, can I go down and talk to the guidance counselor about changing classes for next semester? He goes, absolutely, save me the trouble. <laughs> and my, uh, my high school was offering a radio class the second semester of the year. And That's uh, pretty forward thinking. And, 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 back uh, then? Yeah, and, and uh, I took it, fell in love with it, and then from then on, I mean, all through college, I went to uh, Indiana Wesleyan and... Uh, I, I never changed majors, which is odd for college students. Uh-huh. That and, is very and, unique. Uh, and then uh, did that, and I was lucky enough to land a job in radio um, like two weeks out of college. Wow. Two weeks. Two weeks out of college. I was. Uh, did you enjoy those two weeks? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I, I had to say, I, I, I wasn't a great college student, just to be honest with you. Um, and uh, so I had to take a May term class, and it got over, and... It was Memorial Day weekend. Me and my cousin uh, did a little uh, like long weekend. We went down to Nashville and hung mm-hmm. out. And then like the Monday after, or like Tuesday after that, I was stopping at radio stations handing out resumes. And uh, like I said, I, I grew up in Blackford County, so I came over to Marion. And at that time, there were two different radio stations. I dropped resumes off there. Made my way up to Wabash and uh, dropped off mm-hmm. resumes at the two radio stations there. And when I dropped off one there, they were like, you got time for an interview? Wow. Sure. Did an interview. That was on a Tuesday. They said that they would hear. They would uh, get back with me on Wednesday. Um, I didn't hear anything. So Thursday, I, I called just to you know make sure that they could get a hold of my references, show that I was interested. You know, one yeah. of those things that you do. Uh-huh. Yes. And they said, well, we need somebody to be uh, on the board. We got a remote Friday afternoon. Can you come in? We want to test you out. So I did that. Uh, they came in after that two-hour remote while I was back in the studio, and they said, hey, we do a classic country show on Saturday morning and then we also do uh they did like they sold radio coupons for you know discounted price do you think you could do that sure so I did that and then after that they offered me a job and I was there for four and a half years until I came to Marion oh that's that is very (laughs) interesting (laughs) it it was yeah it was very fortuitous and I've, I've I've been lucky yeah you just don't walk into jobs anymore with a hard copy of your resume. I know. I know. That's crazy to me. And then 
have an interview right on the spot right on right. the spot right and yeah I, I wasn't dressed for an interview <laughs> <laughs> so are you a very much a country guy because i'm going to be honest with you when i look at you I see Metallica. <laughs> <laughs> or ZZ Top. Or ZZ Top or Classic Rock, something like that. You know what I mean? So, it's the bald head and the big beard, isn't it? <laughs> I, I it, think so. You're right. You're right. Uh, um, <laughs> so, when it comes to, let's say, like, mainstream radio, things that you hear like mm-hmm. when you're flipping through the dial, of all the stuff that I prefer to listen to, yeah, it's country. Okay. Uh, but I always tell people, most of the stuff... Most of the music that I really enjoy listening to is stuff you don't hear on the radio, okay? Some of my favorite bands you've never heard of. I mean, I'm wearing a shirt that says Whiskey Myers mm-hmm. is a rock and roll band. Um, you've never heard of Whiskey Myers, probably. No, I, I have. You have? Yes, I have. All right. I like you better than Conrad. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I hear that a lot, man. <laughs> so, it's okay. It doesn't hurt my feelings anymore. But no, uh, so I listen to a lot of uh, what they call Red Dirt. Okay. Um, Northern Texas, Southern Oklahoma, um, a lot of Texas acts, yeah. um, some Southern rock stuff uh, like uh, Blackberry Smoke uh, mm-hmm. is another one of my favorite bands. Um, so that's the stuff. Like if I'm just listening in the car, like on the yeah. way here, that's what I was listening to in the okay. car. If I'm scanning the radio dial, yeah, it, it's going to be country music. I do, I do enjoy some some uh, classic rock. Um, um, I was fortunate enough over the last few years, up until the last month or so. Um, the, the company that I work for, we also, up until uh, the 1st of August, we owned uh, some stations in Kokomo, mm-hmm. and I was on their rock station, um, the midday shift, so it was like 10 to 2, so I got to do, got to do some rock stuff too. Cool. But uh, yeah, so yeah, country, red dirt, southern rock, rock, the pop stuff, no way. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, exactly. I'm, I hear the pop stuff because I've got kids. Mm-hmm. Uh, some of it... It's uh, it's hard to shake mm-hmm. out of your head. Shake like it you, off. Shake it off. No. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You see, he knows what I'm talking about. Yeah. Like when I, when I'm mowing my lawn and I'm I'm in my head like I'm, I hear uh, watermelon sugar. Oh. Wall. That song and hearing it so much, it would make me so angry. Mm-hmm. Like why is this stuck in my head? Yeah. Like I. I and then I'll tap my foot. <laughs> I'm like, what is going on right now? I, I need to find me uh, some Aerosmith to there you go. And, and, and fire up the grill and crack a beer. Try to, try to feel more manly. Yeah. Sing a watermelon <laughs> sugar. <right? laughs> yeah, yeah. So coming to uh, WCJC, mm-hmm. you've been there and you've been waking everybody up in Grant County for over a decade now. Over two decades. Two decades. I just celebrated. Uh, August 1st was uh, 20 years doing mornings mm-hmm. on WCJC. Wow. Uh, there was a, what, about a nine-month window there? And that's mm-hmm. how I met you, actually, yeah. because I had to transition over and, and host a show for a few months um, on one of our other stations on WBAT. Yeah. Uh, but overall, yeah, 20 years on WCJC. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. And that, that's a That's a... That's a milestone. Well, I, well I, had, I had done mornings for about two years when I was up in Wabash, and uh, I, I came down to Marion uh, when, when they offered me that job, and uh, I was on it was kind of a weird shift. It was like noon to five, which is, which is an odd shift for radio. And I was like, oh, I don't have to get up in the middle of the night anymore. I was, I was excited. And I was there from about the m- middle of April until the 1st of August, and the, the previous morning guy, decided to, to retire and um, they said fill in until you find somebody well you know fill until we find somebody and uh, it's been 20 years I don't think they're looking anymore so <laughs> <laughs> the, the, that's your sign right yeah, there yeah, right? So I, I guess I'm stuck with it you know and let me just tell you Ted uh, Ted knows because before the day before that interview I was so hyped up mm-hmm. I was like I get to go hang out with Big John in the morning. And, like, Deanna, my better half, she's like, you're psycho. Like, I would be so nervous. You're like, I could not sleep that night. Really? I could not sleep that night. I got there way early. I sat there. Yeah. 
You said watch me through the window. Yeah. It was kind of creepy. No, I was kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I was geeking out a little bit because I was like, this is so cool. This is like, because, you know, we're into podcasting and stuff. And to actually be on the radio, I was like, and D had sent me a text and said, you need to stop talking. <laughs> while, while you were on the air with me? Yeah. yeah. No, I, I thought you did really well. Yeah, I thought so too, but she she hears me enough as it oh, is. Oh, okay. All so, right. yeah. So I was I was super excited to be there with you guys. You guys are like kind of a big deal in Grant County because you get listened to a lot. Yeah, and, and, and maybe it's something that sometimes I take for granted mm. uh, because, you know, nine times out of ten, I'm I'm stuck in a in a tiny little room, mm-hmm. talking to myself, you know, and we don't we can't track exactly how many people are listening. I mean, right. it's it's radio, yeah. so we can't track that. I mean, we can see our streaming numbers and things like that. So I, I guess sometimes I take it for granted because I don't realize the the impact that we have in the listeners until we get to go out and, and in the in the in the public. And I've got I've got. I mean, all different ages of people that come. So I listen to you every morning. I'm like, and that, and I don't take that part for granted. Yeah, I mean, right. because without the people listening, I wouldn't have a job. So you know, I'm a, I'm appreciative of the people listening, but sometimes I, I take it for granted. And it's funny that you say you know a lot of people listen because for my kids, that's just my job. You know, it, it's it's like I mean, if I was a mailman, people don't get excited yeah. when you walk up and put mail in the box, right? Yeah. You know. So that's just my job, and to my kids, it's just the job. But I coach my kids in sports and things like that. And when I first started doing it with some of the kids, they're like, "Oh, you're Big John." I'm like, you know. Yeah. So and, yeah. and to my kids, yeah, I'm just dad. But yeah, to to their some of their friends, they're like, they just think it's so cool that their dad's Big John. Yeah. So. I, I I wish people in the house would, when I walked through the door, <laughs> would be like, "You're the guy from Garage Talk." <laughs> I don't get that. I'm like, ah. The only one you happy before. Yeah. The only one that's happy to see me is my dog. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everybody else. Is Everybody. Just, <laughs> yeah. Shrugs their shoulders. Well, if you're walk like when you walk in that, it's the same way. You know, yeah. I walk in the house and it's not, my wife's not like, "Oh, it's Big John." She's like. <laughs> You didn't do the dishes. You know, that's what I get. (laughs) To piggyback on what you were saying, because when I started telling people that you were going to come on this podcast, everybody knew you. We listened to him every morning. So It's it's, humbling. It really is to me, uh, even after 20 years, you know. So do you feel like some of your best conversations on the radio are with yourself? (laughs) (laughs) Um... True answer, no. No? Um, so we've had, over the, the 20 years, we've had yeah. a, a, a lot of changes there at the radio station. I used to have a full-time news person that came in twice an hour. And when I had the chance to interact with somebody that's in the studio with me, I feel that I'm a lot, a lot more on okay. than I am. Yeah. And it's, when you, when you do radio and things like that, uh, at least the way I was taught, um, everything from my high school class all the way through college was when you're in that studio every every radio station has the, the target demographic you know like CJC we want to hit males and females like 25 to 54 that's our target audience mm-hmm. so we have um, our uh, our consultant uh, we, we use a, a radio consultant he's a freaking genius uh, and I've got the, the pleasure to work with him over the last several years but he, he puts up a, a listener profile, and, and uh, it's up in each studio. It's, it's kind of, and we, we give them a name, you know, like I, one of our stations, it, it has a different demographic. They want to go for a younger audience, female. So they have Sarah. And there's a picture of Sarah yeah. up in front of you, and it kind of tells you, you know, what she's into, things that she likes, interests. And so when you're in, when you're in the studio all by yourself, in my mind, what I'm doing, I'm talking to one person in their car, because radio is a very, yeah. a very intimate. You know, most of the time yeah. when you listen to the radio, where are you? Alone yeah, in your no. car. Right. Alone in your car. So you never. You, good DJs, you'll never hear them say, "Hey, everybody, thanks for tuning in." It's like, "Hey, I'm glad you're here." Yep. You're, you're talking to one person. So, oh, wow. so that's something in my mind. So in my mind. I'm not alone in the studio. I'm talking to one person alone in their car. I, I kind of got to put that in my head that I'm not, I'm not talking to. I'm, I'm giving some some trace secrets how, away. How'd you develop that though? 
our brilliant consultant. You know, I mean, okay. he's the one that he, well, I mean, and, and all the way back, Mr. Soselsky was my high school radio teacher, and I got to give a shout out to him, uh, but because he's the one that really taught me that, was you're talking to one person alone in the car. And, and so I've always had that in my mind, but then with our consultant giving them a name and a personality and, and what their interests are, that's, that, that's re something that's really resonated over the last probably decade with me is, is being able to do that. It's, it's something a little, it's something that most people wouldn't think about. Yeah. But that's the way, when I say good DJs, um, that's what they do. And we'll get new people to come into work and be like, hey, everybody, no. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's one we got to. Stop that's, uh, real quick. Uh, that's interesting because I, I, re I actually yeah. read that. They say even doing a podcast, they said don't start out your yeah. introduction saying, hey, everybody. So act like you're talking to one person. Yeah. I'm going to have to get a shock collar because I do it all the time. <laughs> and, and over here on the wall, you need to get a picture of your target audience. you got to figure out <laughs> 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 who you're, who you're talking about. This, I, is a, this is a little different, yeah, though, yeah. because you have somebody to interact with. Right. Yeah. You know, and even just, you know. I'm sure you two by yourself would do a great podcast just talking about anything because you have that interaction. So yeah. it's, a, it's, a little, it's a little different when you're sitting in the studio alone. That's why my morning show is actually an odd morning show because most morning shows you listen to have two, three, four, five. You know, the yeah. big ones have yeah. uh, a huge cast. Yeah. And so it's yeah. something a little different. I know the one out of Fort Wayne, um, that ha I think her name's Brooklyn. Uh, they do pop music. Um, they they talk a lot about um, topical stuff that are happening like mm -hmm. currently. What I like is you actually have people on that that are it from the community. Mm -hmm. um, I, I you've had some superintendents on, correct? Oh, when when I was yeah. when we were doing yeah. Good Morning Grant County, I mean we try to. Um, to be that we call it our hyper hyper local mm -hmm. morning show i mean we want to focus on grant county now uh, on, on the country station it's a little wider you mm -hmm. know a little wider audience a bigger signal mm -hmm. so and and i sometimes have guests in we're more of a music intensive we call it more music intensive morning show mm -hmm. um but um but some of those other ones like like good morning grant county that's that's hyper local i mean we have the mayor's in. I mean, I know, you know, Marion and Gas City mayors are in every other week. Uh, we try to get the superintendents in once a month, uh, police chief, fire chief, um, just things like different organizations, nonprofit organizations, mm -hmm. just because um, in Grant County, uh, it, it's considered a news desert. There, there's not a whole lot of places where you can get your local news. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we try to focus on, at least with that station and, and and that that rolls over some into the the newscasts that I do in the morning, yeah, and things like that because you you really can't find a lot of that news anywhere else. So, in the twenty three years you've been at WCJC, who's been your favorite, most interesting person to to do an interview with? Oh, well, it was when Conrad Herrera came <laughs> in. Uh, oh man, uh, I I've been very very fortunate um and they don't they can't always come in sometimes it's over the phone okay but I, i've got the opportunity to talk talk to tons and tons of country artists mm -hmm. which is always a lot of fun for me um gosh one of my f most interesting maybe um doc emmerich mike emmerich uh was the voice of the voice, nhl voice on of the nbc from the fountain yeah, he's from LaFountain. Yep. He went to Southwood High School. Mm -hmm. um, Southwood High School has an Emmy in their in their trophy case. Wow! When you walk yep. into the gym, because he won an Emmy and he gave it back to his high school. Yep. So mm -hmm. yeah, um, Mike Emmerich actually got to start at WBAT. Yep. That was his first radio gig. Oh, that's so, super cool. Um, Mike Emmerich was a very very cool one. Um, I didn't realize who he was until several years later, and my it was uh, during the pandemic, and my wife was binge watching things because. She worked from home and would get bored. But um, remember the show, The Tiger King? Mm -hmm. Yeah. He was yeah. actually in my studio probably six or seven years before that. Wow. The, ti the, the Tiger, Tiger King. King. The Tiger oh, King man. was in my studio. Cause was he dressed like that? No, he wasn't that flamboyant. Uh, but he was, he was doing his, you know, his, 
his tour, uh, he was set up in the in the mall parking lot in I Marion with the tigers and yeah, things like that. Yeah. He brought a tiger cub into the studio. Um, he brought a monkey into the studio. Um, and I, I mean, back then he wasn't famous. You yeah, know, right. he, he didn't have the whole Netflix uh -huh. documentary. But after my wife was watching it, I didn't watch it, thank God. Uh, but um, she yeah. was watching it and I was like, he looks familiar. So I started going through old pictures. And I, I found it, it's kind of a profile picture. You can't really see his whole face because I got more of a picture of the monkey holding onto the microphone. But then there's a picture of me holding a, a tiger cub. And when he told me to hold the tiger cub, he goes, you're going to want something with my scent on it. Because big cats are, you know, familiar scents, you're okay. Yeah. So I'm holding his hat, and the tiger's chewing on it. And the hat says Tiger King on it. <laughs> so wow. I've got to meet some, meet some yeah. cool people. That's that's people. that's wild to me, man. <laughs> <laughs> you were in the studio with the Tiger King. Yeah. I can't wait to go home and tell Deanna, because yeah. I'm pretty certain I lost some, uh, I lost some brain cells watching that. <laughs> I think <laughs> I think I did. And like like you said, you, know, you you try to keep a lot of Grant County. You guys highlight a lot of the local artists as well, don't you? You know what? Uh, I was uh, on the way here. I was like, this is the first time I've been on a podcast. Wow. Uh, it really is. But uh, back before COVID, I had a podcast. Okay. Uh, we produced it at the radio station, and COVID killed it uh, because I would have local and regional artists come in for about an hour, hour and a half, let them do some acoustic yeah. stuff and interview them just to get to know them. So, yeah, I love to spotlight local artists. Actually, I drove by one of my buddy's houses right down the road from here, who was uh, my first guest on my podcast. Really? Yeah. Who was that? Troy Lozier. Right here. He's right here. He's right. I didn't remember. Yeah, we, we've yeah. had him. On. Okay, yeah, we've had him. Yep, yeah, yeah. So yeah. he and I have been friends for probably twenty-five years. Uh, wow. We met out karaoke, and I'm, I'm I used to run karaoke in the bars. Really? Uh, yeah. Yep. Back before I. You can see. A little bit. Yeah. A little bit. A little bit. Yeah. Well, we. Daddy, I, I, I think we're gonna have a sing off right now. Okay, well, no, I, good. I, challenge accepted, <laughs> baby. Because me and my wife were thinking about going out karaoke in tonight. So, <laughs> see, I'm just thinking. Yeah, we had a girl on a couple weeks ago. She's yeah. awesome. Yeah, she's got a voice. Her name's Brittany Nicole. Okay, she's out of Anderson. Okay, she sang what three or four songs here. Yeah, you, you, I you guys need to look. I her think up I have her information because. That was something that was cool when I was doing that mm -hmm. because I'd have artists in and I was always constantly looking for right. artists. Oh. I mean, it's like you guys probably getting guests is probably the, the most work that, yeah. you know, the biggest part of your, yeah. your uh, of your job or your podcast is, is getting people in. But uh, that was something that was cool when I'd have artists in. I'm like, hey, do you got any friends that would be interested in coming in here? And they would always have three or four names and numbers uh -huh. that they'd, they'd yeah. give to me at the end. And then... Working out schedules and things like that kind of it, yeah, it got difficult. And then when COVID happened, my my boss at the time was like, "Shut it down. No outside guests are coming to the studio." Yeah. So. Well, that's. You, you're not talking about starting that back up. <sighs> it's a lot I, of I, podcasting is a lot of work. It, it, it is a lot of work, and when uh, so. Pre-COVID, I wasn't the operations manager of the radio station. Okay. Um, so I was just the program director for one station. I had one station that I was responsible for. Now, as operations manager, I have four. And that entails part-timers for, for sporting events and just a, a lot more paperwork and a lot more headache. I don't have time. Yeah. I don't have time. I, I, I mean, would I love to bring it back? Yes. And I, have, I actually have another idea of a podcast that I've been working on and writing on for four or five years. This would be a personal project. This isn't anything to do with yeah. the radio station, but it's just finding the time. I've got two kids that are very active in in sports, and I try to be very, very active in their lives because I know that I only got a few more years before they're gone. Yeah. Yep. So, trust maybe, me. Maybe yeah. someday, maybe someday I'll I'll have a, a setup in in a garage so I can do my podcasting. But yeah. right now, it's on the back burner. And when I get some free time. The, the the personal project that I'm working on is more of a historical podcast. I don't want okay. I don't want to spill the beans on it because I don't want somebody to steal my idea. But um, with that, when I do have some free time, I can do some of my research and some of my writing. So that sounds intriguing. And make sure that when you do do that, you send us a link to absolutely, it, and then yeah. we'll come on your podcast. Okay, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. So. 
you know, I understand like the the challenges of media. Mm-hmm. Are you have you had like conversations with your with your radio station about how streaming is taking away from listeners on the radio? Has it has it become has that been a worry? You know, when before even before streaming, um, Sirius and XM Radio was was a concern. Everybody was like, "Oh, is that is that going to kill local radio?" And now streaming is that going to kill local radio? Mm-hmm. At least at least in a small community like this, we have seen zero effect. Right. Wow. Zero effect. Uh, and I, I see all the research and things like that. Still, I think it was something like 80% of people discover new music from listening to their local radio station. Wow. Still yeah, 80%. 80%. 80%. Still wow. something like 80%. So am, am I guilty? I don't want to say guilty. Do, do I sometimes stream music? Yes. Yeah. And it kind of goes back to I can't listen to the music that I really like mm-hmm. on any local radio stations. I'm actually trying to convince our consultant and ownership to let me do a, a two hour show like once a week of that music so I can kind of highlight it and, and things like that. It's kind of a passion project that again yeah. has fallen by the wayside because I don't have time. But so yeah, I, 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 I stream, but if I'm on a road trip somewhere, um, I like to scan and listen to the local radio. My, now my wife will yell at me because I pay more attention to the the on-air people yeah. than the music just because I want to hear what they're doing and sometimes I'll, I, I can be very critical uh, of what they're doing yeah. but so the streaming thing I think there's a place for everybody at the table in that because something that streaming doesn't offer and and my boss and consultant will, 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 will preach this to the end of the earth is there's no personality in streaming. You're just listening to music. That's where yeah. us as honored people, we have to we have to, to, to thrive. We have to be the reason that somebody wants to listen to the radio. They can get that music anywhere else. Yeah. They can't get the personality and the local aspect. Us talking about, um, we started a brand new thing this year that we're, we're having a lot of fun doing, and we've been able to come to, to Mississippi once twice. Is we do football Fridays now. Every Friday night, yeah. we're at a different area of high school, hanging out before the game. During the game, we're tossing T-shirts and yeah. and giving away prizes. Like we, got, they, we just got terrible towels, so you know yeah. the fans can be waving those in the crowd. You don't get that from streaming. Yeah, no, you, you know you, you got to get. That's why we're always looking for for different uh, in the in the in the businesses. You know, different promotional ideas where we can we can spotlight. I mean, mm. and uh, I've got it got a new general manager she's been in the chair for about a year and a half now she used to be my employee now she's my boss which which, <laughs> is, which makes it well, no it doesn't make it she, she's a phenomenal boss but that's something that she's really strived for is we need to have these big promotions in the gap in the community because that's what's going to set us apart i mean the differentiation yeah, the, yeah. i mean the, f- the first few months she organized uh, last November, we did uh, a turkey giveaway. We gave away 75 turkeys and bags of food. Oh, that's cool. Did the drive through wow. in our station parking lot. Just, we got, you know, of course, we got sponsors yeah. for it. We, we, we right. you know, uh, people donate, you know, uh, people donated the turkeys and things like that. So when it comes to streaming, you don't get that from streaming. You don't get that from Sirius XM radio. So that's mm-hmm. where local radio sets itself apart. You know, I, I, I do stream music. Uh, it's the same songs over and over again mm-hmm. that I do miss. Uh, like every now and again, I miss cable TV because I don't have cable TV yeah. anymore. Uh, you know, uh, but I miss the personality, the character of the DJ mm-hmm. because sometimes that can set the whole tone, set the mood. Uh, some people have a voice for radio. They just do. Uh, when I listen to classic rock, I think about Laura Steele. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that sets the tone, sets the mood. When I think about uh, early morning, I think about you. Like I'm, I'm like, you guys have personality. You have what streaming doesn't. Mm-hmm. A pulse. Yeah, yeah. 
Because, yeah. like I said, you can listen to any song you want to on demand any yeah. time that you want, but you cannot get, well, it, me telling about, you know, my dummy of the day, somebody doing something stupid and, and getting caught doing it. Mm. You don't get that on. Yep. On, I love settle. dummy of the day. <laughs> <laughs> We're looking at one. <laughs> you never, I've never you had might a, be on air next week. I, I've never <laughs> had a headline that said Gas City. So I'm not, <laughs> but that's, you know, and same thing, like you're saying, you know, that, you might have read something and you got a little tidbit on this artist that's getting ready to sing this song or like you said, streaming, you're not going to get that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, and, but I, I want to touch on, you know, you mentioned community, you know, you guys, you know, people donating turkeys and stuff. For a small community, Grant County, everybody's all in. It, I mean, it's amazing, isn't it? It really is. And I'll tell you one of my, so um, over the, the past 20 years of being here, um, I, I've, I've gone and done a lot of broadcasts at different charitable events and things like that. And, and that's something that my, uh, my general manager, she's trying to, to put into place. She wants each, each of our radio stations to have kind of their, their pet charity, you know, the one that's near and dear to their heart. And she was asking me. And I've been involved with a ton of them. I mean, from, from cancer services to the animal shelter to a bunch of others. But the one that was most near and dear to my heart uh, was an organization called Help the Hopeful, mm -hmm. and um, they they've been they've been at it for longer than I've been here, um, helping medically challenged kids in the community. And uh, Jay Yagle, who unfortunately passed uh, mm -hmm. not too long ago, uh, would talk about it because he worked for a liquor distributor, and they donated a ton. And any time he brought those people in, he said uh, they always told him. Grant County is the most giving community that I have ever seen. All over the county, from you know, yeah. from, from Matthews to to Van Buren to you know, Sweetser, Swayze, it. Everybody gives. It's absolutely amazing, and yeah. that makes it easier for us when we want to try to push one of these initiatives because we know that this community is, is going to going to really yeah. give. Heck yeah! Hey, can we switch gears? Sure. Can we talk about your political career? <laughs> How did that start? Okay, so um, when you say it like that, <laughs> no, it was, it, it, it was it was funny by chance. Yeah. So um, it would have been close to no, it was not quite ten years ago. Um, like I said, I've lived in Montpelier for fifteen years, and uh, we have a, a local group that hosts uh, our little street fair, the Montpelier Jamboree, yeah. every year. And um, that organization is absolutely amazing. They put in more work than anybody. They're working concession stands at every basketball game, football game, and everything else. That's how they raise money, and, mm -hmm. and they get donations and things like that. So, and I and I like I, I'd lived in town for about five or six years, knew some people, and uh, I was at a high school basketball game, and uh, I went down to buy a bottle of water, and uh, one of the guys that worked for the the jamboree committee. Uh, was working the concession stand, and uh, I was like, hey, Jeff, can I get a, get a bottle of water? And he goes, he went to grab the bottle of water, and he goes, John, are you a Republican or a Democrat? I go, does it affect the price of the water? Because <laughs> I'll tell you whatever you want to hear. I don't talk politics that much. Uh, but he goes, no. Um, the, the city council person for the ward that I lived in had moved to the other side of town, so she had to resign. And he goes, we're looking for somebody to to fill the seat on the city council. And he goes, I think you would be great. I'm like, okay. I said, yeah. I said, let me talk to my wife. When I come back to get another bottle of water, I'll let you know whether I'm interested or not. So I went up and, and talked to my wife and, and she's like, well, and I've always, always loved politics. I'm kind of a political nerd. I mean, I get more excited about presidential debates than I do with the Super Bowl, <laughs> uh, but uh, maybe not that much, but <laughs> I, I do enjoy it. And so she's like, well, if it's something you want to do, do it. So I went back down. I said, let them know that I'm interested. So the next day, uh, the Republican Party chair for Blackford County called me. And he goes, hey, John, here you might be interested to be on the county council. And I go, county council? <laughs> I said, boy, my political career has moved. What, am I going to run for governor next week? You know? <laughs> and, and, uh, and they had an opening there, too. And, and so I, I explained to him. I'm like, well, I asked him. I said, what are the what are the, uh, the the likelihood of somebody running against me, either as 
city council or county council? And he goes, well, he goes, probably more likely that somebody would run against you on the county council. I said, all right, then I don't want to do it. Because having the job that I have, right. yeah. equal time laws, if I, can, I, couldn't do my, my, I couldn't do my radio job if I was in a contested race politically mm -hmm. for like, what is it, 45 days before a primary and 90 days before a general. I couldn't do my job. Yeah. I said, that's not going to happen. He goes, well, he goes, we'll put you on the, the city council. You'll be on for two years before you have to run again. We just need somebody to fill the spot. So they, they appointed me um, in the middle of the term. And so then for, you know, two years rolled around, it was, it was time for the municipal elections again. And the party chair called me. He's like, are you going to run? And I said, is anybody else running? He goes, well, not yet. This was like the first day to file. And I go, well, I'm not filing until the last day. He's like, well, why not? I said, because if anybody else files, then I'm going to have to go through the rigmarole of unfiling more paperwork to fill out because it's a pain in the butt to fill out all the paper. You, you I mean, school board, yeah. so you understand. Yes. Uh, and so I waited until, I mean, because the deadline, whatever day, it's noon on whatever day. Yeah. And I told my boss that day, I said, I got to leave early because I got to go to the courthouse. So like at 1130, I go walk, I, I mean, and that's what I've done every single time. Nobody has ever run against me. <laughs> but I, I guess that's a compliment to the job I'm doing, I guess, or nobody else wants to do it because city council people in Montpelier don't make squat. <laughs> you know, I don't do it for the money. I, I don't do it. I, I do it for the betterment of the community. Yeah. What do you make? A couple grand? Yeah. Uh, uh, it's public record. I yeah. Mean, yeah, yeah I, I think look, but, before taxes, I think yeah. it's like, it's like, $2,400 a year. Yeah. I mean, after after taxes, when I get my check every month, it covers my water bill and I get about 30 bucks. That's why I, I always tell people, the only reason I'm on the council is to pay my water bill. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a good way to look at it, man. <laughs> well, I mean, we, we, have, we have one meeting a month, sometimes uh -huh. two if we have special meetings, and we're there for 45 minutes right. tops. Right. So I'm thinking, yeah. okay, I'm making like 30 bucks an hour. Yep. Okay. But like, like I said, I don't do it for the money. Yeah. I, uh, so when I first ran um, and we had my little, my orientation, they're like, uh, we need your bank account information. I was like, what for? Uh, I'm not paying to be on this. <laughs> and they were like, no, we, we you're you. going to get paid. I was like, we, we do? I thought this was like or kind of like our civic duty. I didn't even know we got paid. Mm -hmm. um, the second time around when I ran, uh, I had two other opponents. And, again, Deanna was more nervous than I was. Uh, but I felt like if you're going to do this, you need to do it uh, full bore. Uh, work harder than anybody else. I stood out in the rain at the early voting polls. Hmm. I stood out in the rain for 12 hours. I didn't sit down one time. I didn't use the bathroom. I went home soaked. And uh, the election day stood out there again 12 hours mm -hmm. by myself, shook hands, and, and let everybody know, hey, I don't miss anything. I show up. Mm -hmm. I have a perfect attendance for this. Well, I don't see, and I, I can't even say that. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, you know, uh, I, I told. I mean, and I and I can say that I've missed some missed some meetings because that comes second to my kids. Yeah. If, and my, if my kids have games, like yeah. I coached my my daughter's basketball team last year, mm -hmm. I missed a meeting because we had a game that night. Yeah. Uh, so, but any time that I can be there, yeah. I'm there, and I. People will stop by my house that live in my in my mm -hmm. ward and be like, "Hey, I got a question for you." And if I don't have the answer, I get the answer. I mean, yeah. that, that's I got I kind of got into a little bit of a I don't want to say an argument, but a disagreement with our our former mayor um, because of some things that she wanted to do. And and uh, I told her I said, "It is not our jobs to." do what we think is right for the people. It is our jobs to represent them what they want. It was a, it was a big public safety mm -hmm. issue. I mean, 
there were more people at a, at a board of works meeting than there was at any of our city council meetings combined uh, when this all when this all happened. So, and and I, I, I flat out told her, I'm like, it's not our job to push what we think they need. It is our job to do what they mm -hmm. want us to do. You know, we are a representation of them. We're not we're not their caretakers. Exactly. So, I mean. You want to get in political views? I, that's that's my political no, view. Of no, I get that. I get that. It's, it's some of the things that you run into. I, I think, you know, even I had a huge learning curve when it came to uh, what a good bo board member is, mm -hmm. what what a good board member does. Uh, there was a lot I did not know. Mm -hmm. I mean, starting with I did not know that we got paid. Yeah, and. It was off and running from there. And I'll tell you this, I was lucky because, you know, I didn't miss any of Savannah's games. I might have showed up late, but mm -hmm. uh, it, it's not easy. No. It's not easy. Some of the, the decisions that you make are incredibly important to people that don't even care about politics. Yeah. And it's funny how people, I mean, if there's some initiative or something, something mm -hmm. that's going on, I mean, I'm sure it's the same way if there's something going on in the school, the, you know, the, the school system as it is to the, the, the city where I live is you'll have meeting after meeting to, to put forth this idea and you move on to do something mm -hmm. and then they start complaining about it. Actually, not our, it was like two, two meetings ago, had a gentleman complaining about some work that they're going to do in one of our parks and they're going to rename the park. And he's like, well, he goes, you need to have some kind of public meeting about this so people can, can talk about whether they want to do this or not. And, and our mayor, um, who's relatively new, he was kind of taken back and said, mayor, if I may, I said, was this discussed at, you know, two prior city council meetings? Yes, it was. Are they open to the public? Yes, it was. I said, um, it was discussed at the Redevelopment Commission meeting. Yes. I said, is it open to the public? Yes, it was. I said, was there anybody there that brought up a complaint? No. And I looked at the guy and go, well, there was their time to complain. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yep. was, was that kind of harsh? Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, was no, it true? I, I, it's factual. Right. Right. Yeah, it's, exactly. It's, yeah, so it's, uh, it's hard to debate facts. Yeah. So... I'm a, I'm a I'm a I'm a straight shooter when it comes to that. I don't I love uh, it. <laughs> I love it. I I, I you know what it yeah. was it was before our mayor was even mayor. He wanted to meet with all the city council and talk about all these ideas and big dreams and things like that that he wanted to do. And I always call myself a realist, you mm -hmm. know. Don't get me wrong, did I like some of his ideas? Yes. Two things. And and like I said, I live in Montpelier, a very small town. I said, A, where's the money coming from? And B where are the families that are going to do all this? I said, your number one job is to try to get the population growing and more people and families here. Great ideas, but we got to have people to do it. Yeah. So, and he kind of looked at me like, oh, I'm like, sorry, that's the way I'm going to be on the council. If you don't like it, you can try to get somebody to run against me. Well, I'll tell you right now, one one of the best board members I, I, I've ever met, that's his first question. How much is it going to cost? Yeah. Where's the money coming from? Always, always. Yep. Big John, thank you so much for carving out time in your busy oh, schedule to hang absolutely. out with us. We are greatly appreciative of yes, you. Yes, we are. And if our listeners and viewers have not seen you or heard of you, which most of them have, but we have a lot of younger, younger viewers yep. of some of our analytics show – it's like uh, between 18 and 45, listen yeah. to. But check out Big John in the morning. Yep. Definitely. 99.3 yeah. on the radio. 99.3 uh, on your dial. WCJC.com, WCJC app. You can listen anywhere. That's You're letting me give a commercial out, too. Yeah, yeah, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> well, uh, we'll send the bill to WCJC. That's right, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. We are greatly appreciative. Yep. We want you to come back. Sure. We can talk other things. It'll have to be after basketball season. Yep. You got yep. it. You got it. It's going to get busy here for me, too. Yep. Yeah. Coach over here. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm retired. I, I, my, uh, I know we're trying to wrap it up. No, no, no. You're not a time limit. No, yeah, no. Yeah, no. Okay. No. But uh, last year I coached my daughter's uh, sixth grade basketball team and went undefeated. 
We, wow. went, we went 11 and 0 on the season. Um, we averaged 39 points a game. We averaged giving up nine points a game. Oh. And everybody says, "You coaching again?" I said, "Nope. I'm, <laughs> I'm going out a winner." <laughs> that's the way to do it. That's that's. Uh, but I, I did want to mention because uh, Derek Jones. Yes. Very good. You, they are very good. Good friend of mine. They're local. Went to high school with him. Did you? Okay. He was a freshman when I was a senior in that radio class. <laughs> oh, okay. Because uh, I, I know they mentioned last night that, that they're actually going to be at the GC Brewery here in a few weeks. Okay, very cool. Nice. So uh, hey, and by the way, one of my favorite pizza kings is in Montpelier. Oh, it doesn't get much better, does it? <laughs> I have a couple. I've got them listed like one through five. Yeah, Hartford City's in the top five. Uh, yeah. Hart- oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm like the deep dish in Hartford City. I don't know if I've ever had the deep dish there. It's the, the thicker crust. Okay. I don't know if they call it deep dish, but. Whatever it is. Yeah, whatever yeah. it is. I, I, I like I that I go with the standards. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for having me in. Yeah. Thanks, John. We appreciate, appreciate you. All right.